Welcome back to the Aussie Shed, ladies and gentlemen, for another episode of Project Fair Lady. So today I'm going to continue on with the heat shielding work in the engine bay on the Z32. Uh, you'll remember all the stuff that we did in uh, in part one of this heat shielding little escapade here. If, uh, if you missed that one, I'll leave a link to it right there and you can watch that first. And that'll bring you up to speed with where we are now. So what I'm about to do is um, I'm about to put some heat shielding stuff on the firewall and up in the transmission tunnel where the catalytic converters are. So let's go under the Fair Lady and have a bit of a look and I'll tell you what I've done or what I'm doing and uh, how I'm doing it. So as I mentioned guys, I'm working on this area here of the firewall on both sides going underneath and wrapping up where I have the cat sitting and up into this area here. So I've removed all of the other heat shielding that we built in the last video and uh, to give me space to get this stuff in. So what I've got here guys is I've made uh, paper templates. So I've done this by just getting paper, pressing it against the firewall and folding it over till it's an, a tight fit or cutting it until it's a tight fit then take the area that I've either cut or folded with masking tape until I get basically like a boot that fits really well to the shape um, of the floor pan. So I've done this for both sides. So what I'm going to do now is take this out uh, onto the bench and cut it and work out how I can get it to fold flat with the least amount of cuts in it. Reason being I have an adhesive backed um, aluminium and fiberglass heat shielding material very similar to the plain aluminium stuff that I used in some other areas to make the heat shields with you know you can shape it to a certain extent but you can't expect it to do ridiculous things so ideally when you're trying to get around a shape like this you will need to make some cuts in it so ideally we want to know where we are with it and part of the reason I made these was so I knew how much material I would need to buy to be able to do this, you know. Um, so we'll take this out, we'll take it to the bench and we'll see what we're going to need to do to it to get it to fold flat onto uh, a piece of the material that we're going to use. So this is our sheet material that we're using here guys. So you can see it's an aluminium faced um, adhesive backed 5 mil thick heat protection sheet so before we go transferring anything onto this we need to get our template piece and work out how to make it sit flat which means making one or several cuts in it and also trying to work those cuts so they're in a place that's not really going to be a problem once it's in position so you can see I've marked a bit of a line down across here for a cut that I'm planning to do that I'll just do with a pair of scissors. Now I'll use that and just see how well that gets it to sit flat. And if this doesn't work, I can always simply tape it back up and cut it in a different spot until I get the desired effect. And I'll take that through a little bit more and see what that's going to do to us. Alright, so it's got us a bit, but we've still got this, this problem here of this kind of dish shape that goes in two directions. Mainly goes in that direction, which this will help if we fold it down there. But it's also in, in sort of that direction. So we realistically either need to cut across here or cut across here. And I think we'll just keep all the cuts on one side. And maybe go across there. I'll just go and check this underneath and I'll see where exactly that is and how it affects the area that we're trying to work with. I'll be back. Okay so I found a spot through here that I think hopefully should help flatten this out but also it gives me a really good position to join it on the on the car. Now like I say the shielding is quite shapeable but whether it's going to be shapeable enough to uh, reproduce this shape um, you know once it's kind of laid out so you can see that 
obviously it, it grows as we kind of uh, lay it out like um, you know all these things kind of open right up which is which is good because it means that we should be able to get it all back together and looking really neat and you shouldn't even really be able to notice the cuts in it but what we'll do is put some tape over any of the the cuts and the joins anyway but the main thing is to get it so that we can actually get it sitting really flat um, this section here is the is the real issue here because it's quite um quite lumpy bumpy i, think I may have possibly been better off to maybe do this cut here slightly different maybe come through to that point there down to there all right I'll recut that and see what happens like I say it's just a matter of taping it back together until we find that sweet spot where it's going to flatten out really nicely yeah that's better So that's created a bit of a thing there, but I think that'll be okay. I'll put that one back together. So this is the thing, guys, trying to juggle between having a join where you want it in the best, you know, in the place that you feel is the best place to have the join on the body and compromising with the place that's the best place to have it in relation to the sheet folding out. So you can always angle these cuts wherever you want to try and get them into areas that you want, but you've always got to kind of end up in those points where everything's peaking at. Uh, or you're just simply not going to get the shape when you try to re-wrap it back around. That should be pretty good. Last thing is we've still got this kind of bowl here. I don't want to... Yeah, separate it too much. I could do another cut back this way. Which will help that pull around and flatten out. Yeah, we realistically need sort of another cut there, I reckon. We'll see. I'll go and have a look where that works out at. Alright, that seems like it's actually not a bad spot. So, I'll do this one. see if that helps us at all all right that is quite helpful so you can see we're sitting down pretty flat now and uh, what's left there I think we can shape into the material itself and then as I say we'll just get these really neat and we can put some tape over them when they're when they're done but they should sit pretty good pretty tedious sort of a thing to do guys um it takes quite a bit of time to get it right not really a great thing to be making a youtube video video about but um you know we'll just kind of persevere but you kind of get the idea you really have to do a lot of preparation you can't just cut a bit piece of this stuff and then just go trying to stick it on and and kind of shaping it in position because you'll end up wasting heaps of your material uh, just purely because you just can't get it to fit. So, let us see what we end up with. I'll get this marked out and we'll attack it. Yeah, I better check some of these things on my template because they don't seem real good there seems to be a lot of random shaping here now we'll just shrink that hole up a bit i think main thing is we just we don't want to cut off too much we want to make sure that you know, we're not putting ourselves in a situation where we can't use the piece if it's wrong. We want it to be too big rather than too small. Alright, before I go any further, 
I want to hold this template back up on the on the firewall and just check a few things because there's a couple of things I'm I'm not super happy about with it. it. Seems to be a little bit misleading some of this kind of wild crazy stuff here. If I can clean that up, that'd be great. All right. So just quickly, guys, you can see what I'm doing here. I've taped this back on so that it's roughly sort of in position, or and I'm using this section here where the drain for the AC is. I'm going to use that as my starting point, so I want to get that quite neat and accurate because that's the first place I'm going to place the cut piece of aluminium once it's on there so that it'll be kind of like my locating lug. So I've got a couple of trim marks here. I'm going to just trim across because I had the heat shields in place when I kind of shoved all this in. But uh, that's basically, there's not a lot to sort of trim off, just a couple of edges to neaten up. But that's going to be my sort of uh, datum point. All right, head back and maybe even cut this out, eh? All right, well, that's kind of fixed that template up a little bit. So we know what we're doing. So I think that's about all the cuts that I can make on it guys and uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and fit this onto that area keep the backing on there obviously not make it sticking on there yet because that'll be just too hard to work with and see how well I can get it all shaped and the, the plan is to get the shaping all done perfectly get everything trimmed properly and then uh, slowly remove the adhesive backing as I kind of fit it on so I'll go and have a look at this. I'll go and do a little bit of stuff on there. Unfortunately, it's very hard to get a camera in there while I'm working. So I'll, uh, I'll see how much I get done. I might get it kind of roughly taped in position and then give you guys another look at it. Well, guys, uh, that turned out to be one giant pain in the ass to do, particularly uh, to try and film what I was doing and all that sort of stuff, just because of the limited amount of space. It's very hard to hold this in position, even with tape to try and manipulate it and hold it and and you know try to use a camera and talk at the same time so i've just canned it basically i've i've just taken a lot of time fiddling around you can see all these cuts and everything they all uh, they all came up really good they all look really neat and uh it, it fits really well and now it, it seems to have glued you know very nicely onto there but what I am going to do is, uh, even though the joins are pretty much perfect, I'm going to tape over the joins with uh, some of the tape that I've used on uh, on the AC piping up there. That's really nice. It comes from the same company. It's um, it's kind of for this sort of stuff as well. But uh, it just kind of seals off this edge so like water and stuff can't get down there and all that sort of thing and just kind of neatens it all up. So... Uh, I might do that right now, eh? Because, honestly, I don't think you guys are going to worry me doing that. So I'll just attempt to kind of hang at the side, guys, and do this. Is it any wonder I have girly fingernails? All right. So this stuff conforms really well to this tape. It'll actually take on the shape of the dimples. So it will be barely noticeable when it's there. But it will be completely sealed. Just so no crap can get down in there 
and uh, potentially dislodge the adhesive, you know, like if for some reason we get a bit of an oil explosion for some particular reason. Obviously the neater this all is to begin with, the easier it's going to be to get it looking good. But you can see the tape pretty much disappears once it's on there. It uh, certainly does a, a nice job. And it has a really good adhesive on this stuff too, so it will not, uh, it won't come off. I'm, I'm pretty confident it won't anyway. I'm also going to um, wrap this heat shielding up and over the transmission tunnel inside just in this front section again just because it'll stop a lot of heat getting into the cab and it also works as a great noise insulation barrier as well because of the backing on this stuff but uh, I, I can't really do the outer edge because I don't know where the outer edge is at this time but uh, I can slip the other heat shields back on and I'm sure it'll start to look uh, really like something then. Alright guys, so this side's back together now. I'm pretty happy how that is. And I'm about to start on this side. You can see I've got my paper template attached on there. That's, uh, you know, pretty good. It's all the shaping and everything's pretty good how I want it. I've got a couple of minor changes to make to it. But uh, it's pretty much where I want it. So what we need to do now is get that done. And then I'm also going to have to uh, heat shield up the side of this chassis rail here because the dump pipe sort of sits in the middle. I don't want all that heat transferring through into this rail, which will carry through into the rest of the, of the of the structure. And I'll also be wrapping the transmission tunnel completely, like up and over the center. This is the next thing that I'll probably do. So I'll probably take that down to the bench, do exactly what we did with this one here. Work out where to cut it to flatten it out. Then create like a flat template from it on our material. Cut it out and then stick it back in position. As I say, because it's such a pain in the bum to do and to film, I will just do the same thing. So the next time you see me, I'll have this side probably done like that, and then we'll move on to that to that next area. I have bought quite a bit of this material, and I am planning on doing right down where the exhaust system sits and um, and our resonators and everything go, just so that our driving compartment stays free of a lot of that radiant heat that you get from the exhaust system or sitting so close, particularly on turbo vehicles. And it'll also, as I say, it'll also isolate all of the noise from the exhaust system. So uh, I'll get into it, guys, and uh, as soon as I get something worth a bit of a look, I'll give you a bit of a squeeze at it. So that's our second one done now, guys. It's looking pretty good. A lot of shaping involved in that one, but as you can see, it turned out looking pretty damn good. So what I'm about to do, we start working on our filling piece that joins the two together, wraps over the transmission tunnel, and a bit of a strip down the side there. So I'll get into those, and I'll show you what it looks like when they're all done. Okay, well that's starting to look the part. I'm um, pretty happy with how that's turned out. As you can see, that's now complete all the way over from side to side. I've done up that bit of the chassis rail. It's all fully taped up down into the corners and around the perimeter other than in some of the areas underneath where I'm waiting to get the exhaust system back on just to have a final check if there is any real hot spots that I think I need to take care of in this area. Honestly, I think everything's fine up here. It's really now down past the catalytic converters. The exhaust tends to move into the center more then, so it's a lot less of a problem. I'll just take you in briefly for a little bit of a close-up look at this. There we go guys, you can see all the uh, corners and everything have been been done, we've all, we're all taped up. Our perimeters and everything are all taped up. We come up neatly up in behind this area here, uh, right up to the steering column where it comes through. Around the top, into that area down there, meets our side uh, heat shield over the fuel lines and everything down there. And then we have that section that goes through underneath. Now my catalytic converters sit about here, which is why I've gone sort of right back to here 
Now, I imagine that uh, there's probably quite a bit of heat that's going to be radiating into this area because it's very close and it will kind of spread up. So I thought, well, I might as well just kind of do the whole lot up in there. It really isn't that hard to do. Uh, and I think it's going to be very effective, as I say, not only for heat, but also for noise. So this is obviously the biggest noise generating area uh, in the vehicle behind the back of the engine where we're right up against the passenger compartment and everything. So, um, yeah, that's pretty good. All right, so the only thing left to do now is to get the exhaust system back on and just do a little bit of a double check. All righty, I'll be back. Well, that's our exhaust uh, now back in position, guys. I'm pretty happy with the way it's all worked out. I think I've got all of this end of it completely covered from the gearbox cross member back. It certainly looks to me to be pretty reasonable. Let's go underneath and have a little bit of a closer look. Okay, so uh, you can see why I've uh, done this heat shielding down here. Just due to the location of this dump pipe here out of the back of the turbo, uh, you can see that there will be a lot of heat radiated uh, into this chassis rail here and this has just uh, sorted that out you know pretty much completely if anything I probably could have come forward a little bit more in this area here just because the um, exhaust turbine is sitting right here you know so um, yeah I probably could have maybe snuck a little bit more forward on there but it's okay I'm, I'm pretty happy with it I don't think that's really going to be a problem uh, over this side again that's all pretty good as you guys have probably remember from before I did uh, fix up all this area where I've added this section here into the heat shielding and, and down this lower section where we still had a little, a little part of one of our lines protruding through. That's all been sort of completely sorted. Uh, you can see where the cats are uh, underneath. That's all, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be pretty good. I don't think there's going to be too many issues there. The cats actually sit up a little bit closer. All the exhaust is kind of bending on the flex joint further down, so it's sort of hanging down a bit. It does sit uh, very close up in these areas, hence the reason why I've really uh, tried to go all out with all this heat shielding. There are still a couple of spots further down that I need to pay attention to, but, you know, I'll get to those. Areas where we're, we're pretty close still, like uh, up, in, up in this area sort of here on both sides and I'll probably end up just putting a bit of a bit of a run down beside the exhaust down both sides. But basically, I think that's it for the heat shielding now, guys. I'm pretty happy with that, and uh, I think I can probably move on to something else. Alrighty. Alright, guys. Well, that's just about it for this episode. Uh, heat shielding's gone pretty well, I think. Uh, there's not too much more I can do with it other than that little bit sort of underneath the car there. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm probably going to do a little bit more sort of down uh, along the side of the exhaust pipes and everything. But I think I've pretty much got it covered now, so it's probably time to move on to something else. Always plenty to do on the Fair Lady, as you can tell. Uh, lots of work in bringing a car like this up to a standard of a modern day performance car that's going to be comfortable and reliable and have plenty of power and all that sort of stuff. Uh, so as always, guys, thanks for stopping by the Aussie Shed. Bloody pleasure to have you here. If you like the video remember to give it a thumbs up if you haven't subscribed to the channel get right onto that and as always i'll bloody well see you on the next one cheers all right so you can see why i've done heat shot heat sharting okay <laughs> Fuck of me. All right, guys. Well, that's just about it for this video. Um, I hope you're enjoying how Project Fairlady's going. Uh, are you fucking kidding me?